Hi, sports mom. All right, I don't know what's going on with my camera. I'm trying to make it so that you can see me and what I got, but I guess what I got is more important than seeing me. <laughs> um, so I did say six o'clock, so I'm gonna get started. <clears throat> so today I, can y'all just give me a thumbs up to make sure that the volume is fine? So I know people can actually hear me. I just want to make sure I can be heard. <clears throat> no, I can't be heard. I can. Okay, cool. Um, all right, yeah. So I'm bringing, um, I know one person wanted to even see how to put epoxy on a tumbler. So I'll make sure I show that once I'm done glittering. So I'm gonna be doing a glitter ombre as well as a spray paint ombre because I'm gonna do that underneath so that you can see both. Um, so the first thing I usually like to do is prep. So some people do it, some people don't. Some people feel like they've never had an issue, but I have, so that's why I prep. Um, before I could, I would get all the way down to my first coat of epoxy and maybe I was using my X-Acto knife or something wrong and I was able to peel majority of my layers off. Um, so that's what made me start prepping. And prepping is very simple. I don't really go super hard with the sanding. Um, I don't even use my mechanic or my power sander. I just use a typical um, sand block from Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, uh, I think even Target might sell them. Hobby Lobby, I think Michaels has them as well. It's literally just a, sand, a sanding block. So with the sanding block, um, the grit, I just grab whatever I see. So I don't even know what grit this is. I just get a good um, sanding block. I try to get them a little bit. I look at the rocks that's in the sanding block and I'll get like one that has grain that I can see and then I'll get another one or sometimes on the opposite side it'll be a um, smaller grain so that way I can sand with both just depending on what type of coverage I want so with prepping I literally just sand the entire cup I know that I've sanded it if I can see the scratch marks on it that's how I know sorry about that that's how I know that I've sanded the end the area that I'm working on. This particular tumbler that I got, I had a business warming party and someone brought me blank tumblers for my business. Um, I don't know, I think it came from like BJ's. It came in a set of four and they were like multiple colors and I figured since I had them, I might as well just use that for my um, tutorial. It also has the, it's like a soda, soda um, cup. So it has the lid like a soda cup and then the straw as well. And I won't be doing anything to the lid in this video. I may go back and pearl it or bling it out, but in this video, I won't be. So all I'm doing right now is prepping my cup, AKA sanding it, sanding it down. I'm just making sure that I get a good coverage, making sure that I um, have hit every area. This cup actually has grooves in it and to get with your groove cups, you want to just go right across it sideways. And that's typically how I can get that groove as well. Has anyone that's watched... Sorry, that's my big baby dog, Rocky. Has anyone used ombre and method before? What were your flaws what what did you like what didn't you like and so right now i'm going to take just a random towel that i keep in my office and i'm taking alcohol and this is like a little push bottle that i got from dollar tree they still sell them but now they only sell the smaller size 
And I'm just gonna take a, a little bit of alcohol and wipe my cup down. That's just to free it from any debris, any oils, or anything that might interfere with my spray paint. So I'm just wiping all that debris off just so I can have a nice clean palette for my spray paints. I wish I could I wish I could give you guys names. Um what is that? Hello Bar on Bond. All right. So that's wiped down. So now I'm going to relocate into my um, garage so that I'm able to show you how to spray paint it. Okay, so I'm new to it all. We're gonna, um, we're gonna get you right sports mom well, i'm gonna try anyway <laughs> all right so i'm just going into my garage so i can show you how to spray paint everything and for this tutorial i am wearing gloves but it honestly de depends on the day i try to wear gloves as much as i can because i don't like getting my hands dirty it takes too much to clean that spray paint off or I'm smelling like acetone okay so uh, let's pick some colors out I didn't, I should have did this before I started, but I'm just gonna pick two random colors that I have. I just bought this one, so I wanna see how it looks. I randomly will be in Walmart and I will get <laughs> colors because I'm like, oh, that's cute, I wanna try it out. And it's called Vintage Blush. And it's a satin color and this is by Rust-Oleum. And again, some people have preferences for spray paint. I don't, I don't, I've never had an issue with running or dripping. I just make sure I put light coats on and I also um, stand back so I'm not up on top of the cut when I spray it. So I'll be using the Satin Vintage Blush and the Gloss Deep Turquoise. Yes, so my paint station is like a miniature tent. Um, I got it from Amazon and if anybody would like that link of course I can send it to you as soon as I find it and I got this because I wanted to spray in my garage and I didn't want my car getting any type of damage any type of uh, blow away from the spray paint so as you can see all of my blow away goes into the tent and it's not touching my car okay um, I'm gonna be using this is a rust-oleum spray gun so it's literally easier on the hand you don't get that paint on your finger um, you can get a better coverage at one time I will do that Michelle if you can just remind me I can um, shoot you a link and show you so you can have the exact size but so they come in three sizes one is a little bit bigger and one is a little bit smaller but yeah so the spray gun I'm going to use this one only because it I feel like it gives me more coverage you could easily use your finger this is not like an end-all be-all tool but Spraying a lot of cups, this just gets me that coverage that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go and you always, I always go in with my darker colors at the bottom and my lighter colors at the top, just because that gradient flow, it looks better to me. Um, so I'm gonna be doing the top of the cup in the vintage blush, and then the bottom of the cup is gonna be in that deep turquoise. I have this upside down. I'm actually going to start with my bottom. Okay. So, what I do is I always start at the top. And notice how I'm not like right up on top of the cup. I'm backing my arm up just a little bit just to see where it's even going to spray. So that way I don't have a big 
chunk of paint anywhere. And I'm just going in a back and forth motion with my spray paint just to get that full coverage. And so I actually have my tumbler propped up on a random plastic cup so that I'm able to turn it. So now I've turned it, but I made sure that I know I'll get to the cup, I'll get full coverage this way because I can still see where there's some paint is. So I might go over top of some paint, but that's okay because it's a fast drying paint, so I won't have to worry about it running. So what I'm looking for as I'm spraying is that gradient look down here. So this is fine because obviously when we put the other color on top, we're gonna get some um, coverage on there. And for, if there's any nurses watching, I promise I usually use a mask, but I didn't want you to not be able to hear me. So that's why I don't have it on today. The things we did to teach. So this actually gave me a very good um, coverage for the first go round. So what I did was I just wanted that gradient look all the way around. So I just go in a sweeping motion from top to bottom and I focus, make sure I get the top of that real good. Then I just go in a sweeping motion, let it get that gradient look. It's okay if it gets down at the bottom because we're covering that up anyway, okay? And then I just turn and do the same thing until I, I'm sorry until I get that full coverage on the entire bottom, right? So I'm letting that dry just a little bit. And for perp for um, epoxy and glittering purposes, I'm actually gonna be using a cup that I already did. It's the same style cup. I just did it in a different color. Um, I don't really know what I plan to do with it, but I will. I will be glittering this one in an ombre. Something similar to the same color, it's just glitter. Okay, so although that top part is not fully dry yet, I can go in with my second color and that's the Vintage Blush, okay? And it's Rust-Oleum. So I'm just gonna go in with that second color because it's nice and hot out, so I know this is getting dry. If this was the winter time, I would have went in the house and let it take some time because obviously in the winter time, it is a little bit um, colder, so it's not gonna dry as fast. So Michelle, I actually received these cups as a gift um, for my business warming party. I typically use hog tumblers or um, Ozark Trail if I'm in a rush and I need to get a tumbler done. This cup actually came from BJ's if I'm not mistaken and it was like in a four pack of stainless steel tumblers and they were um, decorative already. They were meant to be used as is. Not They're not meant to be. They weren't blanks pretty much. So this time I'm going to go in a sweeping motion but I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So, I noticed that on this end right here, or this end right here, I kind of went up a little bit higher, which if I were glittering it, it wouldn't matter to me because, you know, the glitter will give me that full coverage that I need, so I wouldn't be able to see it that much anyway. But I'm pretty much doing the same thing I did. I'm trying to get that gradient look when it comes to the bottom. I'm sorry, well, the, technically the top. Um, so what I do is, wherever I was at, with the spray gun i'll back it up even more and i'll go even faster with my swipes and that's how you get that gradient look at the um, bottom as well and if you notice that you messed up you covered too much of your dark or you didn't cover enough of your light once it's dry you can go right back over it and fix it so it's not like you have to 
uh, strip it or anything like that. They're so forgiving. So right now I feel like I went up a little too high right there. So I'm gonna go back over it with my turquoise just to see, you know, I want I wanted that turquoise to come down just a little bit further. And again, I can tell that my cups are drying a little bit faster because it's hot, which is why you see me working with my spray paint so quickly um, versus if it weren't, if I can tell it was still wet, I wouldn't be putting my coats on so back to back because um, then it will run. But because I'm applying it so lightly, I can go right back on it with my spray paint. let that dry a little bit more I probably will go back on it with a pink just a little bit more and I just go back and forth until I get that ombre that it is that I'm looking for everybody's ombre is a little bit different but the, the the catch is you want one color to look like it's fading into the next you don't want it to look like it's blocked so you got turquoise and then pink no you want it to look like it never ended or one just began if you guys understand what I'm saying as long as you don't see that straight line going across, then to me, you have successfully ombre when it comes to um, spray painting. You definitely just want it to gradient, I'm sorry, not gradient, but gradually flow into the next color versus pink, blue. Okay, so for our video purposes, I'm gonna take the cup that I have completely finished, I've let it dry, and we're going to ombre glitter and I'm gonna be using a chunky glitter with a fine glitter and of course this is my all-time well she's new but I just learned about her and I have been shopping with her maybe weekly to get my glitter and unfortunately unfortunately for my wallet she's local so i can get my glitter whenever i need it Good view. I know everyone will see me. Sorry about that, guys. Bear with me as I change locations for my glitter arm brayers. Should be ready to go okay so glittering your tumblers with an ombre style i will be using the epoxy method to do this you can do it with mod podge but mod podge dries so quickly that i prefer not to do it with mod podge especially when i need a little bit of time because with that ombre i want to make sure that i get all the coverage that i need because i typically only go one coat when I do the epoxy method. Right. So the epoxy that I will be using today is, because this is just for my um, glitter coat, I'm gonna be using the Envirotex Light Pour On epoxy. This is not what I put on top once I finish. I actually use the KS resin 
on my top coats or if um I start to use this one once I get past the bottom coat. So once I start epoxying my glitter, I would use this to um, seal the glitter and for my final coat. And if I even need another coat, I'll use that this same one as well. Only because it gives you that super high definition gloss finish. Like I compare to this one because I used to use this on my tumblers. It's good, but I like it to look like it's super thick on there and you get a very good gloss finish. And this is used with the KS resin. I finished this tumbler with that. And that's why I love this epoxy. And they do have a website. And until I can post it, if I'm not mistaken, I think it is like ksresin.com. And they sell a much bigger jar. They got them even smaller. They even have sample sites. I meant sample um, bottles on the site so that you can try it out for yourself I, did, I this is the first bottle i started with because i knew i would like it i've seen um, others use it and it looks really good and it is also easy to work with it is thicker but it is easy to work with okay so because i'm only going to um epoxy this cup just for a layer for application i'm not going to use that much if i were to be making a lot of epoxy i would take however much i need and then mix it in a dixie cup that came from like target or walmart <clears throat> just for more space and i haven't had any issues with my dixie cups falling apart or getting inside of my um epoxy let's see what else the glitters that i'll be using again came from my glitter lady is what i call her um i'll put her link i'll definitely shout her out i'll put her link in there crafty creations she does have a website and this color is hypolux and this one is the carabella from her website okay um i'm probably gonna take about 2.5 milliliters I'm not using that. 2.5 milliliters of each A and B. I like to be very frugal with my epoxy. I don't like to waste it because I use it very often. And as we all know, as crafters, epoxy is not cheap, especially the KS resin. So right now I'm just measuring out. And you can use you find what your go-to amount of epoxy is there's no set amount for any cup we all use different amounts um this is just me using my um i guess veteran skills to know how much i need without wasting too much if any but i will say it's better to have too much than not enough because you would hate to get in the middle of mixing mixing your epoxy applying your epoxy and then realizing you need more because then you'll have to stop everything you're doing and do this i call it the least favorite part of making a tumbler so i just i just grabbed a baby wipe um i believe these came from amazon but i typically go to medical sites that sell medical supplies because they're usually like 70 cent a sleeve a dollar a sleeve um i think amazon they had um i don't even remember how much i paid for them but i think yeah i definitely i know these came from amazon but you can get them from medical sites as well you may have to pay shipping though that might be the only difference between amazon if you have prime and the medical sites and i think the one of the medical sites that i know of is alera alero i think that's how you pronounce it alero medical um alero materials or supplies all right so i'm just making sure that i have the same amount of a and b that's super import, important so that you don't one you don't want your epoxy to end up um tacky or you don't want to have um, bubbles. And I noticed that if they're not even, you'll definitely get um, fish eyes is what they call it. Which, 
trying to see if I have it in this cup to show you. It's like that. It looks like there's a crater in the middle of your epoxy. That's what a fish eye is. All right. So I'm just mixing whichever part this is into the other part. It doesn't matter which one you choose. What I'm using right now to mix my epoxy is a, um, a stirring rod. So where did I get mine? I actually ordered mine from Backfist Customs. But that was when it first hit the scene. Um, I think pretty much everybody is selling it now. Um, any any supply vendors, Amazon definitely has them. And it's just a metal steering. It's just a metal steering rod. Why do I use the metal steering rod versus the wooden steering rod? Um, metal doesn't have any pores in it, so it won't give you as many holes as the wooden steering rod would. And right now I'm just scraping out my um, cup, just making sure I get everything so that I know my parts are evenly, ooh, evenly um, distributed. So now I'm just gonna mix. I'm just mixing um, part A and part B together. How long does that typically take? You just want to make sure you no longer have that haze that's in there right now. You don't want that haze. You want it to be super clear. Um, the table that I that I have right now is a typical folding table. It is actually covered in contact paper. Because I noticed once in my um, previous home, I would get epoxy all over these tables and they would be ruined. So I put the contact paper on top, one, because it's easier on the eyes, and two, it protects it from all of my epoxy mess. Okay, so you got to know the difference between bubble haze and not being mixed enough haze. So right now, they're like a billion micro bubbles inside of there. So it's going to make it look like it's hazy, but it's not. It's just, just literally um, air bubbles. And there are two ways that I do to get rid of those bubbles. Well, a majority of them. The first one is I just let it sit and I let all of the air bubbles come to the top. And then I would use heat to um, get rid of them. So like right now I'm letting them sit and they're all starting to come up and I would just apply I'm trying to see if you can see them popping and I would just apply heat to it to make those air bubbles pop so because this is a bottom layer epoxy I really don't care about the air bubbles because we won't see them once the glitter is on so right now I'm just gonna apply my uh, epoxy to the tumbler um, even if I was putting a top coat on, I wouldn't care as much as others because I know when I'm done, I'm going to apply heat. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter about the air bubbles because the heat will eventually make them come off. Okay. So right now I'm just putting my Turner arm on my cup. This actually is going to go straight from glittering to my Turner I got the true quality for um for hand for arm turners and then I have just another one that was $25 from Amazon guys um just on the side of it and then of course I had to keep my oh you can't see it my own created turner on the end I couldn't get rid of it because that was the start of my crafting life <laughs> so what do you need to glitter? You're going to need your epoxy since that's the method I'm doing. You can use um, epoxy, you can use Mod Podge, you can even use spray on, easy tack. Um, what do I recommend? Um, definitely epoxy because you get a little bit more time and you only have to do one coat versus Mod Podge. You gotta go in with a few coats if you want good coverage. So 
I'm gonna be using parchment paper to uh, allow my glitter to fall on. It's the easiest thing to collect glitter and it's only a dollar at Dollar Tree for a roll. So I stock up, I got about three of these right now because I like to use parchment paper. One, because it's forgiving to epoxy and glitter just slides on and off of it without any issue. I know some people use um, computer paper, which also is good, but my go-to is parchment paper. So I have two parchment papers here because once I finish glittering one, I just wanna be able to move on to the next and then throw my glitter back inside of the um, bottles once I'm completely done, just so that it's not slowing me down from getting my cup turning, okay? So right now I'm just applying I'm going to apply my epoxy on top. And this is the same, kind of the same method you would do if you were epoxy in any cup. You, I would just would have mine on the turner because I'm going to put a much thicker coat if I wanted this for my actual design. But because I need to just apply glitter, I'm putting just a super thin coat on here. And the reason for that is if you do not, it will soak up your glitter and then it'll look like your glitter is wet or it'll make your glitter look darker and that'll actually show under the epoxy once you put another coat on it won't go away so super thin and i'm just pressing hard to make sure that it's spreading because sometimes the thicker like if this was the ks resin it would be even harder to spread only because it gets so thick but this one is not as thick, um, so it's a little bit easier to spread. Notice how I haven't even picked up my epoxy cup yet, because when I say I need a thin layer, I literally just need a thin layer. I don't want it caked up on there because I don't like that effect of my glitter's shine being taken away. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more and I'm gonna put that on my silicone. I'm just gonna spread that around as well. Allegro Medical, that's what it's called. Yeah, 500 for $7. See, that's the bomb deal. 500 cups, Ooh, I could do so much of that right now because I am running low, so I need to place my order as well. Hi, Phyllis. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more because I don't have any more on my finger to run across my last few spots. And you can also, you don't have to pour your epoxy. Sometimes I actually just dip my finger into the epoxy. But I just wanted you all to see how much I'm using. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And again, I just love full coverage on the first go round because I like to get my cups over and done with. I do not like spending a lot of time with <laughs> epoxy and cups. I, I like to see that finished product, I get excited. So I want full coverage the first go round. So take your time, don't rush, but um pay attention is what i'll say so that way the little mistakes won't cause you to have to start over um or to take more time than you need like adding an extra coat because you forgot an entire spot on your tumbler so right now what i'm doing is i'm doing my final run through thank you maxine yeah pink and green uh, unfortunately because i'm a zeta i don't really <laughs> use these colors a lot but um, as a kid, I definitely use these colors um, way more than I do now. And they've always been a cute combination um, together. So I'm just running my hand through one last time to make sure I got every last spot on my tumbler. I'm using my entire curve of my finger. So I'm like curving with the cup as well. And that's how I know I've gotten a lot of um, coverage. Okay, 
And right now, there are air bubbles on my cup, and I'm not going to spray them. I'm not going to do anything to them because I'm getting ready to cover them up. I noticed that my creases are blank, so I'm just going to go across them to make sure I got them. So Phyllis, um, my Tumblr, this particular Tumblr was actually a gift to me at a businesswoman party that I threw a few years back and I had them sitting around and I knew I needed to do a tutorial so I figured I would use it. It came from BJ's a few years ago. Um, <laughs> I bet it is, Nia. <laughs> um, they came from BJ's a long time ago so I don't even know if they still sell them. Um... But yeah, BJ's, four pack, multiple colors. These were ready to use. They were not, um, they were not blanks like the typical place. But my blanks that I use, I get from um, a few places. Stainless Steel Depot. Um, it's a few vendors in this group who sells blanks. But that's about all that I'm aware of because that's all I really go to. All right. So I'm being a little extra now because I'm talking, but this is pretty much covered. So I'm ready to glitter. I'm going to start with my green because it's chunky. So I, I'm going to need a little bit more space to make sure I get enough on there. Take this off because I shouldn't need it. I always leave this glove on just because it's a possibility to get epoxy on my hand because my hand is so close to the tumbler. And I have some glitter left. I mean, not glitter. I have epoxy left. But once this is over, I'm probably going to glitter that other tumbler. So I won't be wasting it. Extreme Cheapskate Crafter Edition. <laughs> All right. So I'm going in with my green now over top of my par par parchment paper for the glitter to fall on. What I'm doing is I'm going to hold it at an angle. I don't like to hold it like this unless I was trying to get that outer rim only because this way will give you that line that you don't want if you hold it at an angle it's going to fall so on some parts it's not going to be as heavy and because this is a chunky i need to take my lid off um my glitter comes from crafty creations uh most of my glitters now have have come from there i kind of stopped i swapped from using walmart or michael's glitter um, because sh vendors have better color selections. And um, to me, sometimes it's a better quality as well. So right now, I'm just going over my green with my chunky glitter. And I'm just checking for that full coverage that I want. And I'm going to show you a trick with um, chunky glitter. To make sure that it's flat and is you don't have to do as much sanding once you're done. So now is when I'm gonna start my angling, and it's okay if it gets on your pink because remember we're gonna go in with pink to cover that up, and you just want it to fall. You just want it to fall. Um, light I'm, I'm lightening up my hand as i get to the top because i don't want as much glitter to fall as it did before and then i will pick i can pick my tap up make it a little harder once i'm in full green coverage but then when i get to that top i'm just oh well that's not light but you know i'm just lightening up my hand and to me that's a good green coverage right there i'm feeling it so then what I'll do is, I got a little making sure that's green and not gold. I got, I'm just tapping it down because I want to make sure that it's flat and I don't want to have to sand it more than I really need to. So I'm just going in and I'm flattening this down. See, with the epoxy, you can do this. Mod Podge, your bottom will be dry. Now you're trying to put more on there. So that's why I say 
epoxy method for applying glitter to tumblers. Yes, it takes a little bit longer because you have to let it harden a little bit more. But um, once it's almost dry, most of the time I'm glittering at night anyway, so I can go upstairs once I'm done and then come back down and put another coat on top to seal it before I apply my vinyl. Or if I'm leaving it as is, to apply another coat to make sure I have a good coverage. But you can't do that with um, Mod Podge. You will not be able to do this step, or you will be able to do it, but you'll have to apply more because by the time you get done, your cup will be dry. Thank you, I'm a newbie buying products first. Okay, so yeah, um, starting off, I definitely wouldn't purchase the KS Resin Epoxy because it's expensive and you're practicing. So you don't want to waste it, show I should say. So that um, EnviroLite pour on, and I'll show it again once I can get a clean hand. It's cheaper and you get more to use. So if you use too much one time or, you know, you'll have some left over and you won't feel as bad because if you get it from Michael's, you use a coupon. And we all know Michael's coupons are lifesavers because we spend close to nothing for our stuff. As well deserved, because I'm. if you're anything like me, I'm in Michael's almost every day of the week, literally. So I'm going to fold that over. Um, I'm trying to clear my hand as much as I can. So once I go in with my pink, I don't mix um, green into it. And I'm going to now prepare for my pink color. And this is as well from... Um, I had a whole brain freeze. Crafty craft. And it's the Carabella. Carabella um glitter. And it has a very cute holographic. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's super holographic. So um yeah, just just shop with crafty cra uh, crafts. This her glitter, it amazes me every time. All right, so if I wanted to be fancy and say, uh, I kind of like this, I would definitely leave this cup like that and let it stay ombre. This is technically still an ombre. It's just with the solid and a glitter. And if I wanted to and I wasn't making this video, I probably would leave it like that only because this just looks fire to me. But because I want to show you how to do it with both glitters, I'm going to go in with my pink as well. So again, I'm going to start from the bottom and then work my way to the top. This is also why I wear gloves because um, my boyfriend is tired of me <laughs> finding glitter in his beard due to it taking itself a trip along with me on when I leave out my office for the night. So I'm trying to keep all my glitter in one room instead of being all over the house. So gloves help you do that. All right, so I did hold it to the side for that full coverage down here. But now as I'm getting ready to go into the danger zone, I'm going to hold it at an angle to make sure I get um, that gradient look as well for the pink. And I'm also backing my hand up. My hand is much higher than it was when I was putting it on the top and bottom. All right, and I'm just checking for that coverage that I'm looking for. If it's light in any spots, I'll go in and just do a few taps. Nothing heavy because you don't want it to all fall out. A few taps. And so let's say I missed a spot, right? That color underneath is what allows you to get away with it. Because if I didn't, it would be brown copper showing through and that would be too obvious. So I may have to use two coats. But because I sprayed it before, I... um have that full, full, full coverage. And I know for a fact that if there is anything showing through, it's the same color as the glitter, so it's okay. Okay, so I now have what I'm looking for. I got that gradient look. Um, you can't tell where the pink ends. You can't tell where the green begins. So to me, that's a bomb ombre. Um, I'll post i post the um, website for Craft Crack. Not Craft Crack. That's another one I use. Um, 
what did I say? Crafty Craft. Okay. And she also um, has like a group where she does uh, discounts or I call it VIP access to certain colors that haven't that she hasn't put on her site yet. All right. So with the um, fine glitter, you don't have to pat it down because it's fine. So it doesn't um, stand up like the green does. But see how I have that piece standing up? I don't know if you can see it. Like right here, I'm just going to flatten it out. Okay, so what I would do with this is I typically would either set it up on my drying stand or if I am not epoxying for the night, I'll put it back on the arm and let this actually dry for a few hours if I'm not leaving out for the night. And once that's hardened or dried, I will come back in with another coat of epoxy and just put it while spinning. I'll just apply my epoxy on top. Um, if you feel like it, is leaking or not leaking but if it's spreading you can also take it off and seal it with a acrylic just a clear acrylic rust-oleum sells it my podge has an acrylic whichever one and spray it on top just to make sure that one doesn't leave the other so for this one because i can tell some of it didn't uh stick down i'm gonna spray it before i apply that a last coat of epoxy on there but i won't be doing that <clears throat> in this video because this takes a little while to dry all right did anyone have any questions oh um let me show you i don't even think i have it in here i can show you uh, what it actually looks like the uh, acrylic that I use so you can be a little bit more familiar but it's it's in the spray paint aisle and it'll say clear it'll have a clear lid and it'll just say acrylic acrylic um clear spray paint or acrylic coat or whichever And I'm just putting my glitter back because every little piece matters. All right, and I'm gonna show you a little nugget that I got a while ago. Another crafter posted about it and I had to have it. Um, my little mushroom, which is also um, a vacuum cleaner. So, <laughs> so all my ladies who can't figure out how to get that glitter up do not use anything wet to pick up glitter guys it will not pick it up instead it'll play in it you want to use everything dry even if you don't use a little table vacuum or desk vacuum and then that's it i would literally open this up take a brush brush the glitter out and i don't have any glitter on my hands or on my desk or on my clothes i'm trying to think before I end this tutorial, because it's technically over, we only were supposed to talk about ombre, and I know I was told, don't <laughs> get off track. Um, if anybody wanted to see something else, I can try to do it tonight. If anybody had any questions, this would be the perfect time to ask. Again, I can try to find it on Amazon, Michelle, and um, put that link as well, so... Just so that I'm not lying to y'all, because I will definitely forget what it is I'm supposed to post after this. And I will have people airing me out. Um, What did I say I was going to post? Glitter site. Vacuum. Um... When do you spray the acrylic paint? 
Oh, so once this is dry, so once that epoxy is good and dry, I would definitely um, take it off and spray. So you don't want to bother it right now because it's still movable. If I were to push this, the glitter would move. So you want to let it dry. Um, I would say just to be safe in like four hours or five hours, but nothing before that because you just want it to be dry. That's the, the main thing. Um, glitter site, vacuum site, medicine cups, epoxy. I think that was all I had to show what sites to get stuff from. Um, glitter site. Oh, the tint for spray paint. Oh yeah, I'll definitely repost this video. I can put add it to the group so that anybody who didn't see it or needs to refer back to it can watch it. No problem. Um, no problem, Maxine. Thank you, Michelle. I really try to make sure that you guys, because I know it's newbies and it's kind of hard because we all expect you to just go to YouTube. But sometimes seeing that live on live, um, that live one on one. Q&A tutorial with um, cups is much easier than doing it with a video. So I understand. Um, I'm very patient when it comes to teaching. I work with alternative students in a um, crazy area. So, and those are my babies. They teach me patience. So I definitely don't mind um, re-showing anything or going into more detail because if you're anything like me, you have a billion questions and you want to get them out and you don't want to feel judged. <laughs> so I'm definitely prepared to answer any questions. Thanks, guys. You all are so welcome. What all to build a spinner? So that is a... Um, okay. So what all you actually need is PVC pipe, um, a football or something for the arm for your cup to apply to. Wood, you would need a turn motor. So it's called a rotisserie motor from Amazon. And they have different types of motors that go at different speeds. Um, and screws and a drill uh, to make it. Now, how did I make it? I went on different YouTube videos and I took different techniques and I put it all together to get my own. There is a buildable um, turner on Amazon where they just send you the parts and you put it together, but it's super simple. And it's like four screws in there and it's only $25. So if anybody would like that link, I can try to find it and um, add that as well. Yeah, I'll definitely repost so you can see the spray painting process because I was um, a little detailed. I hope I wasn't too detailed with how to spray paint. But um, I don't know. I just, when I was watching my YouTube videos, I wanted to see the spray painted more. And a lot of the times they'll say, oh, this one was already spray painted. Well, I'm going to show you from here. And they never showed the spray painting process, which is what I had to learn on my own. So I've had a few cups that run. I've had a few cups that had that block. They didn't look ombre. Um, but the best thing about running with spray paint, with glitter tumblers, is let it run because it's getting covered. So we won't see it. Long as it's not super thick and chunky and you might've just had a little bit of run because you added a little bit too much right there, it can run as much as it wants because it's getting covered with glitter. So don't start over. Don't take it off. Just let it run and keep going. <clears throat> Somebody said they wanted the... What link was that? Um, oh, the Turner link. Okay, the $25 Turner. I also have the spinets from Michaels. And um they're on punishment right now that's why you don't see them because i came downstairs and my tumbler was on the table 
because it spent out of the um, motor. So I said, you know what? I'm done with y'all right now. They are super loud. I will not lie about that. They um, can be a pain, but for my emergency tumblers, or if I didn't have enough room, I had a full house and I needed to still be able to spend more, I would pull them out and use it. But the spin it compared to the one I got from Amazon, which is also cheaper, was much, is uh, not worth it. Let me make sure I answer all my questions. Did you build it? So I, I've only built one. The other four I got from True Quality on Etsy. And then I have one that came from um, that came from Amazon. I think that was all my questions. Yeah, Nia, I'm so over the spinets. Like they one make way too much noise. And when I came downstairs and saw my tumbler on the table, I said, "Whatever, I'm done. Their own punishment." <laughs> you took it back my head my head epoxy all on it so i know i can't take it back but um you know <laughs> i don't really use it yeah uh if you have the spinet just make sure that thing is on there tight like don't crank it too tight because you'll strip it and then it'll just spin around inside of it but just make sure that your arm is on there tight. I don't know how that happened, but it was the only time it happened, but I don't want to test it and try it again. Hopefully they don't fall off. What kind of um what kind of turner do you have? Because that spinet is a work of art. Yeah, the Amazon one that I have also, it's not, it doesn't, none of them make noise anymore. Now that I've gotten rid of my squeaky ones that I made when I started out, they don't make any noise. <laughs> and if it does, if I just tap it a little bit, the noise stops. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I mean, don't let me, I'm not bashing spinning in any way. I just know that <laughs> it did not, it did not make me happy. So I'm not, this is in no way bashing spinning or Michael's, but it's just not my cup of tea. Um, what sorority are you in? I feel like that was the... I think I saw it. I don't, I don't remember. I don't want to get it wrong. And I'm since I'm still talking to y'all, I still got some more stuff to do. So I figured I can kill two birds with one stone. I'm literally just um, going over with another coat on some shot glasses that I have an order for. And I know someone right now is eager to see my link, so I'm going to try to go post them now so that we, so that you can um, shop around and look for the stuff that you need. Yeah, I saw that. It was a military sorority. It's like um, pink and gray, I think, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm, I apologize. And this is actually what I'm doing, if you're paying attention. I'm um, doing the Mod Podge method with applying glitter to my shot glasses. I could very much as well do the epoxy method with these. But, um, and you know what? I should have because I could have used my leftover. But I had already started them with a Mod Podge. So, I figured I would just keep going with Mod Podge. And I also seal my shot glasses with epoxy because I don't like the feeling of glitter in my hands on a cup. 
Oh, pink and purple. Okay, pink and purple. Okay, well then you need to head over to um, you need to head over to uh, I don't know why I keep forgetting his name today. Crafty Crabs because she has some bomb purples and some beautiful pinks. So I think that you'll definitely be able to find one to match your sorority colors. <clears throat> that would be pretty cute. Because this purple that I'm actually using right now is on her site. And it's called Samo Set. And I'm pulling it up now to add the links. Where would I put it? In the caption, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. My Mod Podge to dry up. See how fast that Mod Podge dries? That's why I don't like applying glitter to my tumblers with Mod Podge. Sometimes it'll be dry by the time I even get done the cup. And I hate that. With a passion. Because I'm wasting product. <laughs> I'm trying to add the links. As well as glitter. And this method, you use the same glittering techniques. It's just a Mod Podge instead of epoxy. So in order for me to know if I have full co coverage on my glasses, I always look on the inside. And I don't want to really be able to see any light. Like right there, if I can, I know I didn't really get enough coverage. And sometimes I actually paint my glasses before I glitter them. So that if I didn't have a lot of time or didn't want to put a lot of coats on there, I can um, hide it with the paint. You wouldn't even be able to tell. Because on the outside, it will look like full coverage when in reality, it's not. And I use spray paint as well. I just back up far. Are you saying like how to put um, vinyl on a tumbler? Is that what you're saying? When you say put letters on a cup? Because if that's the case, I can show you. If... um. If you have a, a any cutter machine, Silhouette, Cricut, or the other brands that they have. But as far as my ombre tutorial, guys, I'm definitely done. Um, so feel free. I won't be upset if you leave me. But if you want to stick around to see the uh, how to weed and add vinyl to a tumbler, I can definitely do that as well. I got a little bit of time on my hands. Just a bit. <laughs> all right yeah okay i'll show you that i can stop what i'm doing and show you i'm trying to see if i have a cup that i have at the ready stage Okay, do you have a, so you have a, what machine are you working with? This the one I did. Okay. That's done. Dry rag, guys, for your glitter. Don't, you don't want to use anything wet because you will get glitter um everywhere except for where you want it to go all right um okay just for the purpose of this video i can show you so would you like for me to show you explore two okay so you have a cricket would you like to see it already weeded because i have something that's already weeded that i can add to a tumbler or how far back did you want me to go? 
do you epoxy wine glasses just like tumblers um my stainless wine glasses i do um i'm trying to think majority of my wine glasses i have my podge them um but you can there's nothing stopping you you can do that method on any anything that you can do it with my podge on so my stainless i definitely apply my glitter with uh epoxy though anything stainless steel i definitely do i don't like to use my podge on it all the way back i'm a newbie <laughs> okay phyllis so you need to see my computer then so i'm gonna i mentioned shot glasses oh so yeah that's what I, I was saying you can do that i started off with my part so i just wanted to finish it off with my pal my podge but you can you can start the shot glasses off with epoxy and apply it but just make sure you get that full coverage and make sure you put a very thin layer so you can let it dry standing up like this and you don't have to worry about it dripping because it will drip <clears throat> All right, what papers? What papers are we talking about? What papers to use? Yeah, I, I'm a little lost on what papers. So I'm gonna um try to face my computer so we can work on something from Cricut to be able to put it on your Tumblr once it's done. I'm just gonna open up a new project. All right. How I'm gonna do this. Mm. Bear with me, guys. Relocating again. You have permanent purple vinyl. Okay, so permanent vinyl is indeed a vinyl that you can use for um, tumblers. Can can we see my screen? Is this a good view? If it's not, let me know and I'll try to adjust. Let me know if it's not. I'm gonna pull up my. I'm gonna pull up you guys here so I can see what you're saying with that face in the way. So I definitely don't want to hear myself. <laughs> All right. Okay, so permanent vinyl is something that you want to use. Um, starting out, I definitely use permanent vinyl from uh, Cricut, so it's okay to use. Eventually, you will branch off to using only Oracle 651 vinyl. What is the difference? Oracle's better <laughs> um, in layman's terms, but no, the difference is... Oracle has much better usage, a little closer, um, much better usage, um, it's more durable than Cricut. My Cricut used to peel off of everything that I put it on um, easily and not my Oracle 651 vinyl. Is that better, Phyllis? Get closer. If not, I'll move it up. 
more. Maybe I need to hang out with Um, Oracle versus Cricket. I will show you. Of course, I don't keep. I thought I would have my scrap cricket, but I don't even have that. So this is actually um, Oracle vinyl, and you know it's Oracle because it will have this backing on it. Okay. So making a name on your tumbler. Just trying to make sure this stays. All right, I think that should be good. We would, and this is for my beginners, guys. Um, I've opened up my canvas. I've gone to design space. You might come to a screen that looks like this. You would just go to new project. This is, and I am, I did pay for the uh, access. So mine might look a little different. Oh, I guess I need to get off of here. Let's see if it'll let me do it now. Okay, cool. All right, so let's just say I wanted to do something simple like the glitter that we did, the ombre, and add the, um, just a name to it, right? I'm not going to do anything crazy i'm gonna just say i'm putting a name on it right so i will go in i'm gonna i'm on a blank canvas it's on a standard font we'll, we'll work with that later you would just go in and put the name so i'm gonna use my beautiful name it is pronounced the asian name um so now you have your name on there i'm just moving it to give you guys a better view and i'm sorry that it's flipped i don't really know how to not flip it okay so we want to i'm not gonna worry about the spacing yet i want to move in and change my font because i want something better right so if you buy cricut access they'll have their own fonts which would be that tab they'll have your computer fonts which um i download a lot of fonts so i have a lot of different fonts or they'll do both which is all so you got cricut's fonts your fonts or both fonts together it usually starts out on all so that you don't have to really change that unless you just want to eliminate some um so they have all types of fonts scripts um regular aerial fonts um i'm gonna work with a script just to show you the welding feature on cricut's design space I'm just trying to find something that I recently downloaded. I don't really remember the names. Let's see how this looks. And then sometimes I'll go in and see different fonts because I'm addicted. <laughs> I, I will sit on thefont.com is where I, buy my, I, where I download my fonts from. And I will sit on there for hours looking at fonts and downloading them when I have the time. All right, so I'm just scrolling through, looking for some script fonts. I don't really want to use Arial. And if anybody, I'm gonna add it. This is where I get my fonts from. All right. 
so I'm going to be plain and use the same font that I have been using, which is Bell Hamilton from Defont.com. Short story, I spent three days looking for this font because I posted it and no one could tell me what it was and I really wanted it. So I found it after three days. I went to page 77 before I found it. <laughs> All right, so we need to, one, we're going to move our letters together. So click on the word or the phrase or whatever it is that you're working with and go to letter space. You can either hit the arrows and just keep hitting down until it goes to where you want it to go. Or I know negative one is where I like to start and I'll go from there. So I type in negative one and I can either use my arrows now or I can click the word and go to ungroup. And now each individual letter can be moved as one. I'm sorry, individually. So I'm gonna start with my E. I wanna move that over just a little bit because if I put it in too much, you'll see, let me show you. It'll fill that E in. And you won't see the, uh, well, it didn't do it for this one, but imagine that that E was filled in. That's what will happen. <laughs> so I don't wanna see the E through it. So I just moved it over a little bit. Now I'm gonna grab both letters and combine the N. And do the same thing with my A. And as I combine it, I just pick that letter up and go along with it. And this is using script. Making sure I'm not missing comments. Your Greek letter, which one is that? You said it's the U with the line going through it. I'm trying to think. Can you tell me the um Greek the Greek name again? That way I can know what letter it is so I can tell you how to find it. Because if you have um access design the, the, the design space access, um I think that's what it's called. If you have that, you can access uh Greek letters on here. Or you can download a Greek font from defont.com and you can find Greek letters on there as well. All right, so my name is where I want it to be. Let me make this bigger. My name is where I want it to be as far as... The U with the line going through it. So are you trying to... The Epsilon? Is it the Epsilon? Um, my name is where I want it to be. So I'm going to weld it. Now I've highlighted every last letter and I'm going to hit the weld button. Okay. Weld matters when there's a script font because what will happen is it'll cut out on your Cricut and it'll actually cut the letter out on top of the other letter and there'll be little blocks inside of it versus weld is going to cut it with each letter. So I noticed that my I is a little too far over and my N is a little too far over. If that happens, catch it now so that way I can undo what I just did which is using this arrow and it's no longer welded together if you go past that once it's welded and you can't back up it's welded you can't take it apart you can't do anything with it so I would say check your stuff before you go past to keep from having to make the entire word over again Please weld your letters. Please weld your letters. I will say that only because words look super crazy when every last one of your script letters has a tail. Unless that's the look you're going for. Okay. So I fixed that. I'm going to go back and weld it. Oh, there we go. So see how that E filled in? That means something was a little too far over. Let's say your design is not too far over. If that's where you want it at and you don't want to move it anymore you can actually take the letter that is on and go to arrange and either send to back or send to front i sent this one to front i'm gonna see how that does okay see that didn't work 
so then I can go back and send it to back and let's see let's see how that does and see I didn't have to move it I just adjusted the position of it and that fill is gone um let's see all right so that's welded now you want to worry about sizing for your tumbler so how big how small should my wording be it really depends on whatever it is that you're using at the moment so if i'm using this tumbler let's say um i will go back and measure so if i want to do that diagonal look like how i have it in this one i would measure diagonally and if i wanted to go across i would measure across okay so i like the this diagonal look when that's all i'm putting on a tumbler so it looks like i have about five inches to work with i don't want my words all the way down here so i would say i want to start it maybe right there and end it right there so i got about three and a half inches to play with excuse me or four inches depending on what i wanted to do okay um this miniature measuring tape i found it in my boyfriend's truck and i've taken it it's mine now i don't know where he got it from but um maybe try amazon for mini measuring tapes or you can use a regular size measuring tape you just want something that'll be able to bend with your cup so you can get accurate um sizes so um three and a half to four inches i'm just going to pay attention to my length i don't really care about my width i'm gonna pay attention to my length to make sure that i don't make it too long and it ends up somewhere i don't want it so that's a good i'm cool with that I'll make it a little bit smaller just to know all right so i made this one 3.75 inches long because i'm putting it on a stemless wine glass okay so then from there i have it welded i have my design you can go in and play with images like i was telling um my sports mom if you go in and play with your images go to search images this is after you have that access um by cricket and let's say i wanted the greek letters guessing let me see what you all right let's just say B. so here are some of the letters that you can access with um cricket access this is actually something that i uploaded myself into design space so let's say they didn't have the letters that you needed right and you didn't go on to find to get your greek letters but you still need those greek letters there is a way to get them so um let's say i wanted the upsilon symbol i would just google upsilon go to images find my favorite one i really like this one so i would get it Open up the image. Save it. Okay, I made sure it downloaded correctly. Go back into Cricut. Then you would go to Upload. Upload image. Add the file that you want for this because it's not colorful I will go to simple if it were something with a lot of colors in it you can go to complex to get all your colors uh, if it's not as many you can go to moderate but for simple simple is I just want that one design I don't have multiple colors Capsa, Kappa Epsilon Psi okay got you all right, so I'll show you. Oh, I don't want that. Um, how to clean up. So 
eraser, you would spend all your time trying to perfect this when you can do the um, cleanup tool, which will take everything that it's touching. So all that white is gone. Boom. There's no more to clean up. I would um, go to next. Save my word or save my image. Let me show you the difference between save as print and cut or save as a cut file. If I was, if I wanted to print this out, it'll cut this shape, okay? And it'll be, it'll be that color via the printer. Since I just want to cut this out with my Cricut, I'm gonna go to save as a cut file. The best thing about that is once you add it, so it's green. I know it's added. Once you add that, let's say I was like, no, I don't want to um, save it as a cut. I want to just print it out. You can go back to the fill, no fill or print. Print and cut is print. So now this is a print then cut. And no fill means I wanted to cut with my Cricut. Okay. All right. So let's just say I wanted to add that for whatever reason. Um, I don't know how that even got in there. And so, yeah, these are some of the letters that you can work with. They have a sigh as well. So what you would do, that's, oh yeah, okay, you with the line going through, I get it now. So the sigh is there. So I need to make my screen a little bit bigger. And I'm going to resize this so we can work with it better. You will put your letters together. Since they all are the same height already because we added it, you can literally just go to a line bottom. Now it's good. If they were a little um, unevenly spread, you can go to distribute horizontally. And now it evenly spreads them out. Let's say I didn't want them to be that thick because once I weld this, it's going to weld everything together like that. I don't want that to look like that. So what I'm going to do is go in and delete the outline. And then I'm going to go to distribute horizontally again. I'm going to make sure it's aligned again. And from there, I'm going to weld it together. Perfect. Okay. So... Our design was 3.75 or something along those terms. And the same thing. So the same thing I'm getting ready to do with my name, you would do for your um, sorority letters. I'm going to just delete that because I don't need it. <clears throat> All right. So then from there, you will go to make it. Once you're ready to make it, it's giving you, it's showing you exactly how it's going to cut on your mat. Pay attention to that red box. Notice how it's not all the way to the end of the mat. To me, that's annoying because it's taking away space that I could really be using, but whatever. Um, so you got to make sure that your vinyl is in that area. So I'm going to get a piece of vinyl and put it on my mat and then put it inside. I'm going to cut for regular standard vinyl. You would actually cut at... You would actually cut it with the vinyl option. Make sure my make you have to make sure that your uh machine is on and it is Bluetooth. So I don't have anything plugged into my machine to um work it. So I'm gonna click on vinyl. This is this is saved in my favorites. If it wasn't if my favorites weren't here, you would just go to browse all materials. You can either search vinyl or go to vinyl and click it. All right, so this is on vinyl. My pressure is set at a default. That's perfectly fine. I know for the Explore, um, it has the knob, but there should be a vinyl selection on there, and that's what you would set it to. All right, so now I'm going to... Oops. Add the... Sure you can see add the vinyl to my mat and I'm just using a gold make sure it's 
sure you could see. I'm just gonna use a gold vinyl. All right, so this is not a sheet. I'm just using this because it's what I have available and I don't have to trim it. You, it's okay to be outside of the square, just make sure that it's filled in so that you can um, make sure that your, whatever you're cutting out happens on your vinyl and not the mat or anything else. I'm just lining it up in my maker, hit the arrow button that's blinking to feed it. And then once it's ready to start cutting, you will hit the Cricut sign. Once that's done cutting, you'll know because your computer will say 100% and the arrow will be blinking again. You would just hit that to take your mat out and then you'll be ready to cut and weed. So that's cutting. I'm gonna prep to weed. While it's doing that, I'm just going to try to get in here and add some of these links. So that's done cutting. So now I'm just gonna hit that arrow and take it out. Oh, I forgot I still had the key on the mat. That's gold, I'm sorry. So I'm just gonna get my name. <clears throat> if you needed to see how to weed out your letters, I can show you as well. Again, I can get as detailed as you need. Always peel your mat from your vinyl versus your vinyl from your mat if you don't want that curl up effect. All right, so now I'm going to back this up, weed out my vinyl. So Cricut offers a billion and one tools. These are my go-to tools <laughs> for everything. I have a lot more hanging on my pegboard, but these are stay up at the front with me because they're my first thing coming in, okay? So I've trimmed my vinyl around. I got all my access off. I'm only using what I want for my letters. And depending on what it is, because this is larger, I can weed it all together. If this was smaller, I would cut that out because I need to be able to spend a lot of attention on just the um word some people do weeding different i know someone who rocks back and forth i know someone who um just peels it but me i just go across slowly so nothing if something were to get picked up i would see it notice how i held that dot for that eye down because if you're a crafter then you know dots for eyes love to fly away they never want to stay Always watch for your dots. All right, so I'm just going across slowly to make sure I don't pick up anything that I want still laying down. And for the letters, the same thing. I have some I need to get out. Peep the mini trash can <laughs> for my desk. I just put all my vinyl in there. It's easier than trying to access my um <laughs> my regular trash can. Okay. 
so from there i then go in and anything else that i don't want i just take that out some people do what's called reverse weeding where they'll do this first and then take out the big part which works for small things, but you don't have to do it for larger things, not in my opinion, okay? Another cool tool to get is the paint, the um, nail polish holder that you put on your hands. I have one and I just don't know where it is at the moment. You will put it on your two fingers and then that way you can just put all your weedings right inside of it and keep going. You don't have to worry about where you where is it gonna go and you can move faster. All right, so I weeded my words. Now I'm going to apply some transfer tape to transfer it from the vinyl holder to the tumbler. Transfer tape. If you are using Cricut, please make sure that you are not utilizing strong grip. If you do end up with strong grip, don't take it back. You can still use it. Just be sure to take away some of that tackiness. How do you do that? You can either, I usually will just take my pants leg and press it on my pants leg a few times, pull it up. Press it on my pants leg, pull it up. My shirt, pull it up. A towel, microfiber towel. I typically will use a new one that doesn't have any glitter or anything in it. Use that. Press it on there, pull it up. Press it on there, pull it up until you don't have as much um until you don't have as much tackiness to it because it will take your words and it will not give it back if you use that strong grip um, without taking the tackiness away. So yes, contact paper is also a great tool. It's a little bit harder to work with versus you know traditional transfer tape because you have to use a little bit more pressure to make sure you get that... Um, stickiness and i also noticed that with contact paper you can only use it a few times because after that it has no more tackiness or you're fighting too hard it's not a simple swipe pull up the contact paper i typically would only use it like once and then i would throw it out because after that i would have to work too hard to get my vinyl off of the paper also you can purchase i purchased mine straight from amazon transfer tape it's like six dollars for this huge roll <clears throat> um which works perfectly for me it's like an in-between it's it's strong um it's stronger than contact paper it's cheaper than uh <laughs> crickets and it you know works for me i also have some transfer tape by expressions vinyl can you see the name expressions vinyl which is kind of like that one this is the six by Six inch by 100 foot roll. Um, it's kind of like that one. It's a little bit thicker, but again, gets the job done. So Dollar Tree, Walmart, um, Target, they all sell the contact paper. You can get it from your online vendors, whoever you would like to use. Mix and match, try to play around, see what works best for you. So typically when I'm working with something short like this, I would use my shorter roll, so I'm not destroying this up too much but i'm just gonna work with this today so i'm just gonna take as much as i need i know some people who would have put it on top then cut it but i can kind of eyeball it so i know it'll be enough space so now you got your weeded um vinyl what you're putting on your tumbler you then would take your contact paper and apply it with some sort of squeegee you can use a cricket tool you can use what vinyl company sometimes gives you you can use a squeegee shoot you can use even use your credit card okay anything that'll just help you get that pressure that you're looking for for um your entire word to come off so because this vinyl is good i know for a fact that it's already up but if it weren't to be up you can press the back You can also peel from the back and notice how I'm folding it over to make sure all of my vinyl comes off, okay? So now you have your vinyl on your transfer tape ready to put it on your tumbler.
okay? So you will find where you want it to go. Check out your placement. Check out what's not as bumpy so that it'll lay flat. You want to just anywhere that you feel is perfect. If you're doing a front and back, then you want to do it. I use a tool. Let me show you this that I made myself. And this actually helps with placement a lot. There is a link in YouTube to watch to um, make it yourself. It's literally some PVC pipe and some um, foam pool, pool noodles from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to, because I'm going to add something to the top of this to cover that. I'm um, looking for my flat spots and this is perfect. So I have that in there as such. Let's do it like that. Make sure you can see it. All right. Um, I got that ready to go. I'm going to take my vinyl. I do left to right. Some people would do left to right down. I do left to right up. That's just what I like. I haven't um, seen anyone complain, but this is my... Uh, this is my angle okay so what i'm doing is i'm just with it over top it's not stuck yet so i'm moving it with my hand checking out some placement i don't remember i don't want my d to come all the way down to the bottom like that so i'm thinking i kind of like right here that's just me picking it right not too close to the top not too close to the bottom so starting from the outside Take your squeegee. Working on the angle is a little bit harder, so make sure you pay attention to um, where it's going to lay. I'm just going to start from the middle and smooth down the outside. Starting from the middle, working your way out helps you prevent as many air bubbles as possible. If you do get air bubbles, there's a way to get them out, but to keep from having to even deal with air bubbles, start from the middle, go out to the top. Okay, and because I'm on an angle, that's why I'm working so slow with it. If it was flat, I would just go across and it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm just going to run back over that to make sure I have that full coverage. Always remember to wipe your surface down with alcohol. It makes a big difference because let's say you scratched your hair, touched the cup. Now your cup is oily. That's not going to stick to it. Alcohol gets rid of any dirt, any debris any oil, whatever is on the surface, it'll get rid of it, okay? And so now I just peeled that transfer tape off. Save your transfer tape. You can use it again. There I am again. There I am again with my um cheapskates. Save it. You can use it. I stick it to whatever surface is near. Right now, I've been putting it on the um, bottom of my table because I have that contact paper, so I know it's going to be okay. All right, so here's my tumbler. And from here... um. Me, as a business, I would put my logo on the bottom of it so years from now, people can know where they got their cup from. I would epoxy it. And I've already epoxied over this glitter. This one is also on that um, Crafty Craft. Hopefully, I'm saying it right. I'll put the site in there. It's canducecrafts.com, but um, I'll put it in there. Canducecrafts.com. This one is also from there, and that is the, let me tell you what name it is. Dreyes is what this one is. Dreyes Glitter. All right, so this one is actually ready for its last coat of epoxy, and um, I'm going to go back in and fix, I'm actually going to take this off because this isn't what I want to do with this, but I'm going to go in and fix that as well, and then I will go ahead and epoxy it. If you notice, once you epoxy, that there are rises, or there's a few fish eyes in here. I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see them. The fish eyes in there. If you notice that you want to level it out, smooth it out, you can take a sander, the same way we sanded to prep, and just sand over top of it. Depending on if it's rised, you want to sand it down until it's not rised anymore. Notice... If you're if you sand glitter that does not have epoxy on it, it will turn. If it's um not a polyester glitter. So be careful. Make sure that you are only sanding epoxy and not your glitter because you'll take away from your design if you do so. Okay. 
and I will just sand it lightly on the bottom. And I know it took that gloss away, but trust me, once you put your new epoxy on there, it'll be back shining. Okay, so let's say this is how far I wanted to sand it. I'm done sanding. I will go back in with that alcohol. And again, I got this little squirt bottle from um, Amazon, not Amazon, Dollar Tree. Wipe that debris off. I should have did this well before I um, put my vinyl on there. I totally forgot. <clears throat> and it will be ready to go on your turner. You will attach it to your turner. Mix up your epoxy the way I did. Part A is one part A to one part B. So no matter how much you're using, as long as it's the same amount of each, you're fine. You will put that on there. Let that turn. I say overnight. Let it rock. Overnight. Come back. Make sure that all you, you got all your coverage. And if you do, you do not have to apply another layer. If you don't apply another layer, please don't, don't say, oh, no, I'm going to just send it out like that. That's what separates us from the rest when we pay close attention to little tiny details. So please apply another layer and then it's ready to be used. Okay. I know I'm on here well longer than I was planned. Um, any other questions for me? And if... I can't get to your question now. You can always message me, send a firm request, do what you got to do, and I can help out where I can. I'm not the in any way in a um, a Tumblr guru. I just do what I can from what I learned. <laughs> so if I don't have any other questions, I'm going to let you beautiful ladies go for the evening. Um, look out for more tutorials. I promise I will do some more paying attention to what people ask for. I am trying, I'm going to be doing a camouflage Tumblr soon. I might just um, re record that and post it um, because that's my first time trying it out. So I don't really want to do a tutorial on it when <laughs> I haven't. Um, so, all right, I think I'm good. If you all are good, um, thank you for tuning in. I hope I was helpful in some type of way. If you're re-watching this, I hope I was helpful in some type of way um if you have better tips or you want to show me some things feel free to comment that i'm definitely open to criticism and changing up and doing new things i'm loving these two colors together um all right so i don't see any more questions so i think we are free to go ladies and again thank you so much for joining me as i showed you some beautiful um tips All right, let's end it.